Okay guys, welcome back. I got us kind of a zoomed in deal here. Alright, I got my tip. I'm going to go ahead and tin it now. What you want to do is you'll you'll roll it in the tin, in, in that tinner, and then you'll also then kind of roll it in, in on your sponge, you know, to kind of wipe off any excess uh, tin that goes on here. And see then, now we got it nice and tinned. So I'm going to set that to the side for now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put on the uh, we'll put on the the crystal first. So any type of surface mount stuff, lots of it'll come in this kind of like this like little packaging type stuff. And what this is for is for a uh, feeder machine. It's what this is for. If you have what's called a pick and place machine, place this stuff. There, believe it or not, they actually have machines that will actually place all the components all over the board. And while this these come on a reel. Which almost looks like it reminds me of a film reel, you know, kind of like the old film, you know, the old reel, reel films. If you see them, it's exactly what this stuff looks like. It comes on that, and there's the little holes for the little, you know, like kind of sprocket gear to roll this through with, and that's what that's what this is. I may show a video or something on on what a reel looks like and whatnot. But all you gotta do is just peel back the little little tape that's on it, and just dump the component out. Okay, flip it over. There we go. And then, um, then what we're going to do is we're going to tin one of these. We're going to put some solder on one of these pads. Okay. So the solder that I'm using is the ROHS compliant soft so solder, um, which I don't know. I may or may not use. I'll show. I'll show you both of them here. Let me. Let me. Let me zoom out of here for a minute. Whoa, wrong way. Okay, I'll zoom out for a minute. Okay, you got two different types. This this is an ROHS compliant one, which means it has no lead in it. ROHS, I can't remember what that stands for, but it's basically the uh, if it's compliant to ROHS means it has no uh, bad for the environment stuff. It's basically environmentally friendly. You can just um, if this circuit board you ever breaks or something, you just dispose of the whole thing. It's uh, an ROHS compliance uh, solder. The solder will is is kind of like biodegradable. Basically, it it has no lead or any toxic stuff in it. Now that's that's this solder, and I'm using a uh, 0.5 millimeter. You look at that, which is a basically a 20 thousandths uh, solder, which is you know you can I don't know if you can tell the size of it um, by my finger, you know, but it's fairly good size. Then there's also um here I guess here's another size. I've got this. This is a ROHS. See, it's a lead-free solder. It's an ROHS compliant solder too, but this one's bigger. I don't know if you can see if I can get a difference going on here. Let's see. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but one's a lot skinnier than the other one. And you want different size solders because you know you have different size components. You may have stuff that's huge. Here's one that's really small. It's really small. This is leaded though. This actually has lead in it. And if I don't know if you can silver bearing solder, high tech, blah blah blah. This one is 15,000, so it's 5,000 smaller than the other one. But this one actually has um, lead in it. So it's kind of up to you. The difference um, that you will see right away in soldering this stuff is that the tin lead will melt a lot uh, at a lot lower temperature. Um, you'll only have to get it, oh, I don't know, I can't remember, maybe only 160 or so, 160, 175 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, whereas the uh, ROHS stuff, you have to get around, uh, it's almost about 185, almost to 190 degrees to melt it, I think, something like that. Don't quote me on it. Um, you may want to go check. I can't remember exactly what temperature it is, but uh, my soldering iron goes all the way up to 185, so I have to put it around uh, 180 or so before it'll, it'll really be, it'll really melt this stuff good. And another thing is you definitely want the solder, um, how, you, how you can tell if you're just barely melting the solder is if, it, uh, if it's kind of a dull color, I don't know how to explain it. If it's really dull then, and it's not shiny at all, then you, you didn't get a real good solder joint. So you want to make sure that you have shiny, shiny solder when you're, when you're soldering and that'll let you know your heat setting. So if you're getting dull solder, turn the heat up a little bit on your iron and then you'll probably get the shiny size shiny solder and then you and then you'll get a good joint so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our RDL and we're just gonna touch it to it and you can see it just melts right away we're gonna put a little bit a little bit of solder on there kind of spread it out a little bit there we go get her on there real good 
see how, and I don't know if you can see this, I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but it's, uh, the solder's very shiny. I don't know if you can see that. Well, yeah, I think it's looking pretty good. I'm looking in the little monitor here on the camera. But see how the solder's real shiny? I don't know if you can, yeah, it's really shiny. That's because the heat's correct on it. So you only do, at least I only do one side. I mean, this is kind of, it's really a personal preference thing, but I only do one side uh, at a time, and then what I do is then to stick it down, I'm just going to place the component on there and put your soldering iron on there to where the component seats properly. Kind of spread that out a little bit. And then we got one side done, kind of straighten her up a little bit. And then there's one side. Okay, so now I'm going to turn, I'm right-handed, so I like to do everything from the right side, so I'm going to turn it around here, and grab our solder, so we got our solder, and then we, all you do is just set the tip on here. Now, a lot of people think that you, the harder you push, the more heat you're going to get into it, which is kind of more or less false. Um, you don't have to shove really, really hard. Um, a lot of times, if you shove really, really hard, you will, you'll end up... Um, you could end up bending your tip, or, or or worse, damaging your circuit board that you paid, you know, you know maybe tens of dollars for, or maybe hundreds of dollars for. You know, you could end up damaging your circuit board. So if the heat isn't going in very well, then you may need to clean your tip, or you can use um, you can use flux. Which um, let's see, I think I've got a couple different kinds. Let's see for a minute. All right, here we go. I got a couple of different flavors, and as you can see, I, I put that part down. And that that part's part's on there now. I mean, if I take a pair of tweezers and grab it, you'll see it's on there now. So anyway, but fluxes, um, you can get a couple of different types of fluxes uh, that you have to mess with. Let's see if I can't find my little brush. There it is. Okay, you've got some that comes uh, in a bottle. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna scoot up here. Let's scoot up. We scoot way up so I can. We can see what's going on. Okay, um, like this one is is some keister flux. This is just all-purpose soldering flux. Different fluxes have different warnings on them, and you got to make sure you know read your warnings and stuff. Make sure that you don't have to wear gloves or something because some flux is uh, safe to handle. Some flux is um, yeah, can be really really acidic and whatnot, and could actually could actually hurt your hands. So remember remember to wear your your uh, your protection. But you can read that on the on the on the warnings and what to do with it um, but anyway um, this this one uh, you have to kind of brush on and so I bought like a little brush you can get these usually uh, for really cheap they're just like a little little horse hair brush but you dip the brush in there and then you, you brush the spot that you're gonna flux which can tend to be a little messy you can dump this bottle over and everything that's why I don't really use the bottle fluxes very much this is actually really old this is from a long time ago um, so what I do anymore because uh, Keister has come out with well in a few other places uh, not just key I just like Keister stuff but anyway is ta -da! is this little guy these are the coolest things like ever to hit um, flux application they're basically a tide pin it's the coolest thing in the world. You, you, you push down on it to get it flowing. See here, I'll see if I can get it up here. See, see how you push on it, see it come out? Ooh, see it drip everywhere. Oh, Lord, it did drip everywhere. <laughs> clean up on aisle four. Clean up, clean up, clean up, clean up, clean up. Okay, anyway. But see, and then that, that gets the flux flowing onto the tip, and then you just, yeah, you just touch whatever you want and just brush it brush it on just like a paintbrush and like I said it's just like a tide pin you push onto it and then you know na 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 hey hey you know <laughs> sorry I can't sing anyway but you got that type of a deal and these these are really really cool I really like these little pins and like this one um this one is no clean flux. Um, you can get different kinds. Uh, the clean flux means it'll leave some sort of a residue behind, and you need to have like a flux remover, like I don't know, like a tech spray, like a blue shower, or some type of flux remover to kind of clean the board. Because otherwise, if you get a real big buildup of, of flux on the board, then sometimes that can cause uh, capacitive coupling and all kinds of you know real nasty stuff that could happen when the board's dirty with with stuff. You could have some stray inductances, capacitances, and stray 
junk going on, especially if you're doing like this USB board or something where you're doing uh, high speed stuff. It may cut down your speed. It could even cause error. It introduce errors, you know, like parity errors and stuff like that. It could introduce problems because you've got uh, the board's real dirty and it doesn't have a real good, you know, it's kind of coupling with the components next to it, especially in a dense board too, if you have a really dense uh, laid out board. But this one's a no clean. Um, I still like to clean it. Even though it says no clean, you're supposed to be able to just, you know, wipe it on, solder the component on, and not worry about it. But I'll, it still leaves kind of a film behind, and I just, I don't know, just, that's just me. I don't, I don't like looking at the film, especially when you're dealing with processors or any high speed stuff. So I still kind of clean it. I wish I had a can. I don't have a can of flux cleaner right here, otherwise I'd show you that. But it comes in kind of an aerosol can. It almost looks like WD-40. Um, and it comes in a little aerosol can. But um, this one, I believe, oh, if it says it, shelf life is blah, 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 blah. Uh, this one, I believe, this uh, 951 is an ROHS compliant uh, flux, too. Um, yeah, it's very flammable. That is a big deal. Make sure you, you don't have a flame next to it. The soldering iron's not going to mess with it because that's, it's, it's, it's if you get an open flame next to it, it will probably flame up or if you atomize it somehow you know spray it spray it somehow it will flame up so gotta be careful with that so make sure and read your warning labels but um but that's really cool is the little flux pins these things are cool see flux pin these things are cool so anyway that's if you have yeah um a component with a ton of leads or something like 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 these like the little guys that are here let's see if we can zoom back in whoops wrong way okay if you have these little guys, that's that's what I would do to put down this guy. This is that MCP, uh, or yeah, the MCP uh, twenty. Uh, what what is this? I tell you, it's been so long. I apologize for being so long and making movies. Yeah, the twenty two hundred. That's right, MCP twenty two hundred. I don't know if you can see that. Ooh, that's hard to see. Yeah, that's hard to see. Oh well, anyway. But what I would do to prepare this board for something that has this fine of a pitch space, what I do is I take my cool little flux pin, give it a, oh, it's already flowing, okay, see it? See, and then I just kind of wipe it. And what this will do, like I said, is it's basically a huge thermal conductor. And what it'll do is then the heat from your soldering iron, when you go to put this guy on, it'll just it just shoots right in and the copper and the tin uh, that's on the it's on the component the tin that's on these little parts will just suck that right up so let's let's uh, let's see if we can try to juggle the camera and oh that's blurry juggle the camera and do this at the same time ought to be interesting I'm gonna turn this because like I said I'm right-handed let's see if I can't maybe put a put this guy down I, I might be able to trying to Look at the viewfinder on the camera and solder at the same time. It's kind of interesting. And so, because I can't, I don't have any depth perception. All right, put a little bit of solder on there. Take our tweezers. Come here, little guy. Oh, I can get him. There we go. Okay, now, boy, this. If you ever tried soldering under camera, this is, this is interesting. Get him on there. Up. Oh. Good grief, I shake too bad. Oh, good heavens. Oh, you know what I just realized? I'm trying to put this on the wrong pad. <laughs> pad for just down here. It's another thing about when you scribe your own boards, make sure you keep a, uh, let's see, it goes this way. Make sure you keep a, a drawing of it next to you because, uh, boy, it's, it's difficult to get stuff turned around and get parts backwards and whatnot, and so you don't want to do that. Otherwise, you'll be putting voltage where ground should be and becomes just a, a nightmare after a while you'll start blowing components up and not knowing why and then you realize oh I put that on backwards it's not good but I tell you this is really difficult I don't know if I can do this well I apologize if my head gets in the way but I'm gonna have to look really close at this to Get this to work. See if I can sneak him on there. Oh, I can get him on there. There we go. I think I got him down. Okay, so that's one. And then what I always do is I usually do the one 
that's diagonal from the one that I just did, so that way it locks him down. So otherwise, you'll be you'll be trying to solder or you'll be pushing or something, and he'll he'll wiggle. See how see how he can wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah. yeah. Now see how he can wiggle. Um, you don't want the you don't want him to have the wigglies. So what I do is I usually lock down the one that's 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 diagonal from him. So what I'll do is then I'll take and I'll I'll put a little blob. Ooh, boy, this is difficult looking through a camera. Ooh, there we go. Now I got a blob on 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 right there. And now see now if I poke on him, he he, he no wiggly now. So then you just you just kind of. Like I do, I like to, since I'm right-handed, I like to kind of have it head on here. You just go through and you just touch, 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 touch. And try not to blob it over. And if something happens where you do blob it over, um, remember remember your, your nifty little solder braid here? That's when this will come in massively handy. You take and touch your, in fact, let's just do that here. Let me just mess this up. Let's get up. The old honker piece here, and let's just mess it up. Let's come up here. Oh, oh no! Okay, see <laughs> where you've got you've got basically. A, oh no! I just crossed all those pins, so I just shorted all those pins together. What am I gonna do? Well, now is when we use our marvelous little solder braid. And all you gotta do is just set the braid over the top of of your of your whoops, and then put your soldering iron on it. And once the heat gets through it. Get it on there. I don't know if you can see that. See it turning silver? See? See how it's just turning silver? It's just sucking that right up onto the braid. See? All clean. And see now, I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if I can show you. See how it's silvery right in through here? And that's because the solder braid now sucked the solder up. See, see how these pins are clear now? So the only thing about solder braid is be mindful of where your hand is. Remember, this is copper, so you don't want to stick the iron like this. Otherwise, it's going to be like if you just grabbed a hold of the end of the iron. You want to hold your fingers out a ways. In fact, here, let me, let me zoom out here. Oops, wrong way. I'll figure out how to work this camera by the end of this, I promise. You don't want to be desoldering like this. Otherwise, you're going to burn your fingers. You want to have the solder braid like around in here and be touching here with your fingers way back there because otherwise the heat is going to just zoom right through this copper and it's going to burn your fingers. And uh, the only reason I know that is because I've been there, I've messed that one up, I already burnt my fingers. So, you know, make sure, and <laughs> I've learned that one out of experience. So make sure you keep your fingers kind of away, you know, when you're desoldering with the, with the braid or um, do like I'll do and just hold the little package you know I can I do that sometimes just hold it out here and hold but same thing goes you don't want to be right up next to it or the heat's gonna conduct and it's gonna melt the package I think, I think I have one somewhere yeah this one see see that that was because I I desoldered like like an inch away from this little package in it and it melted the melted the plastic on the package so <laughs> so be careful when you're when you're when you're desoldering with this. Remember, it is copper. It does conduct the heat. That's why we use it. It conducts heat really well. So just be careful of that. But in any case, we'll zoom back in for a final finale here. That's basically how you uh, how you solder your components on. So you just go around, just lay them all out, um, solder all the little pins, um, lay out your resistors, do the same thing, uh, add some solder to one side, put the resistor in, and then um, solder the other side. And that's basically what you do. You just go around and do all your components. And then through hole parts, they're pretty easy. They'll just snap in. I haven't drilled the holes in this board yet, but you'll have, you know, that'll be a hole, then those four holes, and then you'll have a hole there and a hole there. And that part will just snap in to the board because it has retaining clips. That's what these holes are for. And you'll you'll take and snap it into the board, and then all you do is just, just flip the board over and then do the same thing. You know, stick your soldering iron on there and, you know, take your solder and... Set your solder there and your iron there and you know just put it on. It's pretty slick, pretty easy. Really easy to do. So anyway, that's basically how you solder. And make sure you turn your soldering irons off when you're done with it. You do not want a fire in your house. So, you know, fire in the house is bad. So anyway, um, that's basically kind of a brief rundown on uh, soldering. Um, I can and soldering and desoldering few different methods. Uh, if you guys have any questions about uh, anything about soldering or what types of solder and what types of tools that you might want, um, I don't know if you saw that earlier, buzz you over. 
I keep a couple little canisters of, of tools, just all kinds of different things that you may need, pliers and uh, you know markers and uh, little these are these are little bitty pairs of uh, of like uh, cutters and and just all kinds of little tools. Like for example, the, these little guys these little guys just come in real handy because see see how tiny they are. They're little bitty guys, and so they come in real handy um, to to work with. And so with that, and then every now and then you need a little, just kind of a little poker, you know, a little poker stick, you know, to, to apply glue or something with. And so it's just good to have some of that stuff around. Another good thing to have around is good old isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol. That's another good one to have around because you can wipe stuff up with this. Um, these are really nice to have, these Chemtech um, little wipes. Oops, we don't knock everything over here. It's nice to have these little wipes around because um, you never know when you need to maybe clean flux off or, or whatnot, and they just come in these, this little kind of looks like Kleenex. Those are really nice to have around too. So, anyway, I hope that helps, guys. Um, yeah, that's how you solder stuff to your custom boards that you've made. Well, guys, this series has been really fun. Um, I just want to make a little bit of an announcement. I think I probably will be. I've had a lot of requests for doing the high tech C uh, compiler and uh, using it, showing you guys how to use, uh, do kind of the same stuff we've done with ADCs and whatnot, but with the high tech C compiler. And I think I'll probably do that. I'll probably do some more stuff with that since I've, I've been learning that compiler kind of in my off time. So um, I'll be posting more videos on, on that. As well as any other uh, any other stuff, I think there's some stepper motor requests that's come out, how to size them and whatnot. We'll probably maybe looking into that, um, and just kind of anything else that comes down the pike. Any cool stuff you guys see that you want to know how to play with or something, just shoot me a message and we'll see what we can do. So thanks again for watching. Good luck and have fun designing your circuits, and that's what it's all about. Okay, okay, guys, see ya.